Dear Patriots, before the news starts, please, subscribe to our patriotic channel by clicking the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up to this video. Don't forget to leave your opinion below in the comments section. Share the news on Facebook and Twitter so you friends see it. Thank you. Smugrino John Kasich just said Republicans are small, angry and narrow. Ohio Governor John Kasich identifies himself as a Republican, but he's the type of Republican that's so soft and corrupted on so many issues that he might as well just come out and say that he's actually a Democrat. In a recent interview, Governor Kasich angered many on the right by claiming that today's Republicans are small, angry and narrow. Asked host Chuck Todd on NBC's Meet the Press, is the party in a better place than it was at the start of this year or in a worse place, and where are you? Are you prouder to be a Republican today than you were at the start of this year? Kasich responded, making sure to claim once again that he's actually a Republican, Well, I'm always proud to be a Republican, but the party is my vehicle, never been my master. Chuck, when you look at Alabama, there's some very interesting things. 20,000, they think 20,000 Republicans voted for somebody that wasn't on the ballot. I would also say Senator Shelby. He spoke out and said he was not for the candidate down there. He went on, in other words, we're beginning to see more of a tug of war pulling people towards a better position on the party. That's my sense. And in terms of, so, I'm kind of optimistic with some of the things, but here's the thing, two paths. There are some in the party that look at problems, and they're negative and they're angry and they're small, and there's other people that look at the problems and say we can fix them. John added, so, instead of losing the future, which is what we are doing today, turning off millennials. Let me just give you an example. Can you explain to me why the Republican Party that's a majority in the House and the Senate with a Republican president don't tell the Dreamers, the DACA kids that they're going to be able to stay in the United States? That makes no sense. And the idea that they were just going to get rid of Obamacare, which needs to be reformed, and then people were going to lose their health insurance, what are they thinking? Do you think Kasich is a Reno? Bernie just admitted that Dems absolutely plan to hike taxes if they take control. It's a cliché but a true one that Republicans are always trying to save people money and reduce government bloat by cutting taxes, while Democrats are always trying to burden people with more government by raising taxes. It's a very good thing that Republicans are about to pass their tax cut bill, because left-wing Senator Bernie Sanders of Vermont just tipped his hand during a television appearance that Democrats are gunning to raise taxes the next time they get in power. On CBS Face the Nation, Host John Dickerson asked Senator Sanders bluntly, if Democrats take control are corporate taxes going up? The socialist replied, trying to not answer Dickerson's question directly, I think we'll take a very hard look at this entire tax bill and make it a tax bill that works for the middle class and working families not for the top 1% and large multinational corporations. John then asked, there's no question that in order to achieve all of the things you want, Taxes are going to have to go up on corporations if they're down to 21 as a result of this legislation you can't find the money anywhere where else. Bernie replied, in my view, absolutely. Are you glad Republicans are cutting taxes now to make it harder for liberals like Sanders to try to raise them later? Liberal professor works to the ban racist Christmas song Jingle Bells. Boston University professor Kenna Hamill wrote a paper urging people to stop singing Jingle Bells because it is racist. What else do you expect from liberals during the Christmas season? Although one horse open sleigh, for most of its singers and listeners, may have eluded its racialized past and taken its place in the seemingly unproblematic romanticization of a normal white Christmas. Attention to the circumstances of its performance history enables reflection on its problematic role in the construction of blackness and whiteness in the United States, she writes. 
the legacy of Jingle Bells is one where its blackface and racist origins have been subtly and systematically removed from its history, she writes. Its origins emerged from the economic needs of a perpetually unsuccessful man, the racial politics of antebellum Boston, the city's climate, and the intertheatrical repertoire of commercial blackface performers moving between Boston and New York, she wrote. She also critiqued the lyrics. Words such as throw, thought, and upsot suggest a racialized performance that attempted to sound Southern to a Northern audience, she wrote. She also talked to Fox News as I mentioned in my article, the first documented performance of the song is in a blackface minstrel hall in Boston in 1857, the same year it was copyrighted. Much research has been done on the problematic history of this 19th century entertainment, she said. Watch Jesse Waters' brilliantly troll professor who believes eating meat is toxic masculinity. Fox's Jesse Waters invited a professor with a PhD on his show who wrote a paper claiming that eating meat is toxic masculinity. Apparently eating meat means you hate women. When Waters asked why, she gave very vague responses. According to D'Alessio Parson eating meat is one of the ways to reinforce existing social structures, including patriarchy. However, she also claimed she didn't have enough time to explain it further. That's when Waters' producer walked onto the set and gave him a big, delicious-looking steak, which he then proceeded to eat in front of D'Alessio Parson. So, I'm having a steak right now because I'm starving, said Waters. D'Alessio Parson went on to explain that it is only okay to eat an animal if you killed it yourself. Otherwise you just enjoy the benefits and the blood is on someone else's hands. And that's not very fair. It would be great if we had universal health care for our animals, she said. You clearly have some things around who you are that protect you, and I think especially, like financial resources to do things like buy really expensive steaks so that's also part of the problem. That some people are really taking up more than their fair share, she said. Liberals regret voting for Doug Jones after his shocking defense of President Trump. Newly elected Democratic Alabama Senator Doug Jones basically tried to treat Troy more like a convicted pedophile in order to win the election. However, when it comes to accusations against President Trump, Jones has very different ideas. And Democrats are not happy. Ever since Sal Franken resigned, Democrats have been pushing for Donald Trump to resign because of accusations against him. However, there was photographic evidence that Al Franken was a creep. Not so much real evidence against President Trump. In a CNN interview Doug Jones revealed, much to the dismay of the interviewer, that Donald Trump has no credible reason to resign. I don't think that the president ought to resign at this point. We'll see how things go. But certainly those allegations are not new and he was elected with those allegations at front center, said Jones. You know. Jake, where I am on that right now is that those allegations were made before the election. And so people had an opportunity to judge before that election. I think we need to move on and not get distracted by those issues. Let's get on with the real issues that are facing the people of this country right now," said Jones. In an earlier interview, Jones said he was excited to meet Trump. I'm looking forward to meeting him. I'm looking forward to getting up there and trying to find those issues that we can work together on for both the country and the state of Alabama," said Jones. Pope Francis makes it his mission to fight fake news. Pope Francis has done a lot of things that have confused a lot of people. However. Now the Pope has decided that he will make it his mission to end fake news. There is an urgent need for reliable information, with verified data and news, which does not aim to amaze and excite, but rather to make readers develop a healthy critical sense, enabling them to ask themselves appropriate questions and reach justified conclusions," said the Pope at the Vatican. 
there is an urgent need for news communicated with serenity, precision and completeness, with a calm language, so as to favor a fruitful reflection, carefully weighted and clear words, which reject the inflation of elusive, strident and ambiguous speech, said the Pope. We must not fall prey to the sins of communication, disinformation that is, giving just one side of the argument slander, which is sensationalistic, or defamation, looking for outdated and old things, and bringing them to light today. They are very grave sins, which damage the heart of the journalist and harm people, said the Pope. However, he is not done fighting fake news with this speech alone. He also plans to make fake news and journalism for peace, the topic of his 2017 World Communications Day speech.